everybody, this is Mark. And this is Justin. And this is Awkward Fist Bump Productions. Boom. Okay, today we have... Yeah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, today we've got a great guest. Author of the book, Ghost of the Valley, which is a reflection. It's more than just a reflection or an autobiography of his tours in Afghanistan. It's actually a very, very good book. Uh, I, I, I really... I really love it, and in fact, I just started reading it on my little Kindle here, if you can, um, anyway. <laughs> so, without further ado, why don't you introduce yourself, Sean? Yep, so I'm Sean Ambries. I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. I've been in the military for 12 years now as an MP. Um, I have two deployments to Afghanistan, both 12 months. I was deployed to the Kunar province of Afghanistan, it's considered one of the more dangerous, deadly um, 10, 10 or 11 Medal of Honors have been awarded for the mountain area that we were in. Um, and uh, since then, that time, I, I've served at Fort Carson, Colorado, Schofield Barracks, Hawaii, Joint Base Lewis McCord, Washington, and now I'm currently stationed at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, where I teach the uh, MP Senior Leader course. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. We'll jump to you in just a second, but I do want to show you guys something because we have a, somewhat of a decent following now. Uh, and I got some news to share with all you guys that are following us. My nephew, and actually Justin's nephew as well, <laughs> just graduated Navy boot camp yesterday. Let's see if you so, can see that. Yeah, so you, this is the only time in my life you'll ever see me put anything <laughs> even related to the Navy on. In fact, he used to talk smack last year. He would say, go Army, beat Navy. I'm like, son, you got to get through training before you can even talk smack. <laughs> but I guess he's there now. He starts, uh, they call it A school. We call it AIT. He starts uh, A school, uh, I guess, soon. He reported today, but I'm sure it'll be a week or two before they get everything in order and he'll start. But Jeremiah, we love you, buddy. I love and, you, buddy. Uh, congratulations. Good job. But, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyway, so all right. Tell me about your book, Sean. Yeah, I mean, so I, I just started writing my book uh, November of last year, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I was pretty much done writing the book in two months just because I didn't know what I was really doing. <laughs> uh, I uh, it was more at the at, at the time it was more to just kind of put my pain on paper and, and get that information out there and hopefully help others, um, and then it kind of took off more than what I thought it would. Uh, you know, I I was just going to self publish on Amazon, and the next thing you know, I had. I, don't know, I think five or six, maybe more general level officers, uh, a retired sergeant major of the army and a recent medal of honor recipient, um, all endorse the book and, and want to provide quotes for my book cover and everything. So that like, I don't know, it just took off and I just was not expecting that at all. So yeah, it's, it's been going really, 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 really well. But like you said, it, it just kind of reflects my deployments. I, I didn't want it to be a biography. I don't want it to be about me. It, it's essentially just a story told through my eyes and it's narrated in an internal do dialogue type of way. So, you know, you're reading, it's describing what's going on in the battle, but then there's internal thoughts and italicized versions throughout the book. And it's me stopping in that moment and thinking about, you know, in my head, mostly smart-ass comments in that moment. <laughs> uh, just kind of keep the reader involved. So, um, but yeah, so. That's awesome. Being deployed, like, like, what's something, like, that was, like, really good about, like, when you were deployed? And what's something that really sucked about when you were deployed? <laughs> uh really good was was doing your job uh serving your country you know put foot to ass shooting at the enemy you know actually maneuvering on the objective accomplishing whatever yeah. that mission was um and just killing motherfuckers <laughs> that, was the, that was the best job or the best part of it the the shittiest part was they got bullets to fly our way too so yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> the not so fun the part <laughs> the one yeah. thing I love about your book is my first deployment, I was a sergeant and I was actually an NCOIC of a human collection team. And it was very interesting. So I had 10 Americans and 20 Romanians. Um, even though I was an E5, I still had uh, 30, 30 uh, personnel because 20 were Romanians and 10 were yeah. Americans that were under my command. So I guess I, well, you could say I held the billet of, of more like a platoon sergeant as opposed mm -hmm. to just an E5 sergeant. But the one thing I love about your book is it seems to be a good leadership book. And let's be honest, uh, 
when I when I deployed as an E5, I had been, I don't know, I'd been an E5 maybe six months, mm-hmm. and you know, to now I've got thirty people that I've got to make sure that they're okay, that they're good, that they have all their needs, that they have, you know, and and I've always been a big advocate of do do as I do, lead from the front, not do as I say. Um, I, I don't I don't know about you, Sean, but in my E4 and below career, I've had really good NCOs and I've had really bad NCOs. And I'm sorry for those of y'all that don't know what an NCO is. It's a non-commissioned officer. Uh, those are the guys that pretty much run the army. So you got these officers that go to college and they tell us what they want. And we are the ones that go and execute whatever mission it is they want. But I really wish I'd had your book before I went, because I think it would have helped uh, because there was a lot of times that you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a buck sergeant and I don't know what the heck I'm doing, to be honest with you, especially, you know, most E5s sergeants have maybe five, six soldiers that report to them. Whereas, as I said, I had 30. So yeah. there's, there's a great part of the book. And, and before the calls, uh, before we actually press record, I was given uh, Sean a little bit of smack MPs, unfortunately don't get a, a great reputation uh, with regular soldiers as far as in garrison, because if you're doing, <laughs> yeah. if you're on post and you're doing 26 miles an hour and the speed limit's 25, you get pulled over <laughs> and, <laughs> and you get a ticket. And of course, now y'all know I'm in the law enforcement now myself, but I'm going to read this real quick. Just this little paragraph. He says, that's why I love being an MP. We are some of the most professional law enforcement individuals, but at the flip of a switch, we could be asked to be turned into a killer. I enjoy placing others' needs before mine and helping solve problems during law enforcement missions. However, tonight's agenda, including turning the enemy into pink mist. That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. So I'm going to assume you didn't pull people over in uh, Bag- at Bagram. I've never... I. Until I was a Sergeant First Class, uh, until I was E E7, I never stepped, well, no, excuse me, E6 in Hawaii, I did it a little bit. I never sat foot in a patrol vehicle. I'm, to this day, I've never pulled anyone over. I've never written a ticket in my 12-year <laughs> career. I'm Dang. the worst. In, I've, I've been pulled over more than <laughs> most. So, <laughs> so yeah. That's awesome. And, uh, I just had, I've had a, a very abnormal career. So, I mean, I've always been a 31 Bravo MP by trade, um, but my first deployment uh, as you know, you read the book. I, they, as soon as I got to Afghanistan, they said, you're a medic. I said, no, 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 I'm an MP. They're like, yeah, yeah we don't give a fuck. You're a medic. <laughs> so I, was, I became a medic my first deployment because uh, the Army at the time, prior to the surge in Afghanistan, they sent me to mm-hmm. EMT school. And, uh, and so that was a good enough certification for them. And so I worked in the aid station. I went on patrol as the medic. I pulled duty. I had to sign up the morphine, the sensitive items, all that stuff. And then the same thing happened my second deployment where – our medic had to go back home because he was having triplets and there's no reason for him to fucking get waxed when he's about to have fucking three kids. So I filled in that medical role again as a sergeant. And uh, also they gave me an additional soldier and an additional um, task uh, as the designated squad marksman. I don't want to say sniper because I didn't go to sniper school, but they okay. gave me an M4 EBR, Leopold, 10 times scope, extra soldier, all the equipment I needed. I worked with the recon uh, sniper platoon and we did counter sniper, counter surveillance up in the mountains you know, by ourselves, you know, we'd go to the police station and we'd hike up this mountain two, 300 meters up and, you know, we'd, we'd do work. So, Dang. but that, that's what I love about, about that part is, you know, people, so many people, especially if you're in the military and you're watching this, you think an MP is just an MP. That's not, ca- that's not the case when they deploy. Capabilities they are could, crazy. MPs could do a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're going on awesome. patrol. Uh, you're doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Mm-hmm. You're not just standing there pulling people over in Bagram, giving them a ticket for doing two miles an hour over. So first of all, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your service, by the thank way. Thank you. Uh, thanks for yours. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you don't know, Senior, Le- Senior Leaders Course, I'm sorry, SLC, we mm-hmm. talked about this a little bit in the chat before I came on. He, we were able to get him on today, but I think you said Monday you start you start a, yeah. a new class, and yeah. I, I know I was an I was an instructor and a trade doc instructor, not a drill sergeant. I taught the uh, 35 Mike course and the 35 Fox course, and I know when our when our courses started, it was 14 hour days, six yeah. days a week, 
until right. the end of the course. So yeah. um, SLC, for those that don't know, uh, is basically when you become a sergeant first class or before. I don't know. What are they doing now? I've been it's out. Just, I've been out about seven well, years. Staff sergeants, like they're squad leaders or platoon sergeants right now, but it's like a prerequisite for them to get promoted to sergeant first class. Okay, because I know for a while back in the day during the search, we especially they would just promote us, and then you would go to ALC yep. or you'd go to. Okay, so now you have to go to you have to go to the course before you get promoted. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Outstanding. So thank you, as I said, for giving us, I know you got just a few days left and then you're going to be back in, in hell again, if you will. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but what is the, what I see <clears throat> about your book is it seems to really drive it more than just, Hey, these are my combat memoirs. Mm -hmm. You, what you seem to want to really talk about the issues that affect the veteran community. What issues are that? Yeah. Uh, well, do you mind if I ask what chapter are you on right now? It's uh, okay. Well, you don't Thing. chapter two okay so, <laughs> so uh, that's fine that's fine so so shit's really gonna pop off chapter four five seven and eight that's the, it essentially breaks down as you've read chapter one throws you right into a situation my second deployment literally just throws you into a day and then it yeah. brings you back and just kind of chapter two kind of describes me um just to kind of set the base you know where i'm from los angeles being a native american joining the military and then, you know, chapter three talks about going to my first duty station um, and then the buildup of being turned into a medic. And then in chapter five hits you with from the most feedback that I got. Chapter five is, is I guess, the most emotional chapter. Uh, it's not everyone. It's I want to say it's everyone's favorite, but it's not their favorite, because obviously there's an American that's killed. There's multiple wounded. I become wounded. So it's a, it's a it's a it was a situation where we had to go on a rescue mission where you know, I won't tell the whole story, but a, Two squads were cut off up a mountain. We were told 200 meters, 200 meters up the mountain. Radio static because of the mountains, cut it off. Mm -hmm. We missed the last zero. It was 2,000. And so we went up oh, there with no, food, no water, no medical equipment. Eight of us <coughs> volunteered to go up and rescue two squads. Um, and it turned into this, you know, hours and hours long situation where we had, you know, my LT was killed. There was multiple wounded. Um, and there were three snipers facing down a draw and we had to find a way to extract them all out and then find a new way down the mountain because it was too treacherous to bring them down the way we had come up. Um, and then that was, it was a situation where this is again, this is when bin Laden was alive and we were right across from saw village and he had a safe house there and the entire village just lit our fucking mountainside up. There were enemy within, um, they got within, I think like 70 meters or so, uh, you know, they got within, about 20 feet of one of our guys that got separated. Um, and then uh, our first sergeant had to call Broken Arrow. And, and for those of you who are oh, military, geez. you don't know what Broken Arrow is. Broken Arrow is a, it's not an official term, but it's a Vietnam era term that everyone kind of knows that you're on the verge of being overrun or overwhelmed. And if you don't get air assets to your location, we're all going to die, essentially. And so uh, C-130 Spectre gunships, uh, F-16s, Kiowas, Apaches, they all got on station. And just rained, rained hell to get us off the mountain. And so, um, yeah, so that's probably like the most like dramatic uh, chapter. Uh, chapter six talks about coming back home, some things that happened, dealing with some things, meeting my wife. Seven, chapter seven was going back to, I volunteered to go back. Um, some mm -hmm. of the things that we did, and then we got the call of there's a major enemy push. You're going back into this valley that I was in my first deployment that Americans hadn't been in in about eight, nine months. And it was a huge operation in which um, 16 of us Americans, so one squad of us MPs, got called to uh, rescue a humanitarian aid convoy under attack that was, was cut off. It was a wounded Afghan police officer. And we got told by our command, hold your, hold your ground. And within 20 minutes of the battle starting, uh, us 16 were surrounded and cut off completely by 150 enemy fighters. Uh, and they bum rushed the vehicles and they got within eight feet of us. So oh it was just hand grenades, keeping them back, using everything we could. Almost, almost at one point for for three of us, almost went hand to hand combat. So it was Jeez. it was very, yeah, it was fucking crazy. So uh, and then the last chapter, chapter nine, talks just um, just the aftermath, dealing with everything, where I'm at now in life, how I've kind of dealt with all that, and what my plan is to give back to the veteran <clears> community. <throat> and then chapter ten is not really a readable chapter. It's just phone numbers, websites. And information for veterans. So if they pick the book up, 
they have that information, you know, for themselves. So that's, so, awesome. so that's great. What type of references are we talking about? So everything. The, the, yeah, the unwritten rule obviously is PTSD and and the public and and people don't know what PTSD is or if they do. Well, the one thing I hate is when you when you hear something in the news and unfortunately it's a veteran and they they do something stupid then you mm-hmm. you automatically hear it's almost like we get an unfair rap because of PTSD. So yeah. so you got references I guess dealing with PTSD. Yeah, it's just like it's like a like website from, from, it's it's websites and, and different uh, entities out there. I mean, even down to like travel and uh, it, it, literally anything. All I did was essentially was, you know, I'm, the, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but essentially I was like, well, I want to give references. I want to give information to veterans. Like, what do I even look for? So I literally, when I got to that chapter, that last chapter, I just Googled veteran information, veteran resources. And I just started, well, this one looks good. Like if I was getting out of the army right now, if I wanted to know something like, what would I want to know? And so I just started copying and pasting a bunch of stuff. I, I did all the work for them. So essentially, if they just open up Chapter 10, they'll have a basic understanding of – and it's not obviously every resource in the world, but it's <laughs> you will break down your main subject of resources, and then that way it gives you an idea so that you can further educate yourself and get the help that you need. I like it. Are they are, are any of them VA-related, or is a lot of them outside some, of the VA? Some, some of them are outside of the VA. Some are within – um, at least at least the program name. So if maybe maybe they don't know exactly what a program does or it exists. At least it'll tell them and they can outsource other things from that if, as well. So. So as a I civilian, like if we come across veterans and or if we've got family that's veterans and they have PSD, like uh, like how can like civilians help y'all out? Like what can we do to help y'all like get make it easier? I mean, everyone has their own individual problems and situations and financial situations, emotional situations. And I I think every single person is different. It's hard to say this is the one thing we need from our civilian counterparts. But uh, honestly, it's just listening. It's not really um, it's not really, you know, empathizing, but sympathizing, you know, with the situation uh, under just understanding that, you know, we've gone through some shit and, you know, and that that's kind of like one of the reasons I re- released the book when I did like, fuck, the country was tearing itself apart over these dumbass race issues and stuff. And like things that us veterans just don't see, mm-hmm. like what the fuck is race? Like we don't we don't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? Like and so and it, just the way the country was tearing itself apart um, and, you know, the military was getting a bad rap and and, uh, and all of this, it, you know, martial law was going to get called and the army's going to turn on its own people and all this other bullshit. It, you know, this is something that needed to be released and people needed to understand. Don't forget the past 20 years. You've had fucking dudes put in foot to ass, taking mm-hmm. bullets, literally, literally mm-hmm. putting themselves in front of uh, in front of you so that you can live that that life. And so um, this is again, this is just one story. It's a story told through my eyes. But uh, hopefully it'll be that little reminder to you know our civilian counterparts who maybe are just ignorant to the fact that they just don't know that yeah. there are some great americans that walked this same earth you know so oh yeah we definitely have a love for our military and respect for y'all and everything y'all do for our country i i mean we always have but especially you know after 9 11 and you know i yeah. really wish that america would go back to 9 12 and just like oh yeah how how we were all united you know we don't see color i mean if you see color then you're the one that's got the races in you you know like we're all humans we all bleed blood you know what i'm saying the red and I wish that we could get back to that. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. Agreed. And actually, that's that's a good point. Um, uh, so a lot of people, I don't know if you've ever seen the show 60 Days In. I, I introduced myself to you as a 60 Days In guy on A&E. But in my jail, where I went undercover, I went undercover as an inmate uh, in, a, in, a, in a jail, that everything was about race. And if we, a yeah. lot of the people here that are watching it, they're going to they're gonna know me from the show and that's why I kept harping on it in the in the pod when I would be interviewed, is I just don't understand the race thing. And in uh, in jails out west, everything's race based. Is I did 13 years in the army, where I really didn't care if you were Native American or if you were black or if you were, you know, white or you know. And and Sean here can tell you, man, we we put our lives in each other's hands. Period. Yeah. I've got your six, you've got my six, period, in the discussion. And that's what I love about law enforcement, too, is uh, when when I got out and I, I, I dabbled in some other things, but I wanted to get back almost to kind of that mindset of, 
of I miss that brotherhood, that sisterhood that the military had. Law enforcement's kind of kind of a little bit of the same as I've got your six, bro. And uh, yeah. and so good stuff, bro. Um, so I actually heard an interview, and I, if you don't mind, I want you to rehash it just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you you had talked in another interview about how you got picked up because it seems like the people that picked you up, I knew you you had looked at uh, doing the Amazon self-publishing route, but you actually got picked up by the people that sell all the AFES books. Oh, I say mm-hmm. AFES. I'm sorry. All the stores on a military base, at least Army Air Force, is called AFES, and we call it the Post Exchange, PX. Um, sorry, I know a lot of people aren't going to know the terminology, but but why don't you rehash that story and tell us, I know you, you get a proceed of the sales, but a large chunk of your proceeds goes to help veterans. So why don't you talk about that for a minute? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I was, like I said, uh, I looked in the publishing process and it just was ridiculous. I mean, unless, unless you're someone famous, you know, I'm not a Stephen King, no one's going to give a shit about me and, and want to spend $10,000 on trying to publish and distribute and ship and store my book everywhere. Um, and so it was, people are like, yeah, I mean, you can send a copy of your book or a chapter of your book and mm-hmm. a letter requesting to be published but you might go a year and you'll never hear anything bad. I was like, fuck that. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I'm not waiting on anybody. I'm not going to sit on this for three years. And it, I just it wasn't, I, I would rather Amazon just take more money from me. Cause I'm, I told myself I wasn't doing it for the money regardless um, that I would just rather go the Amazon route. I could just self publish. It'll go live that night. Amazon will print it. They'll ship it. They'll do everything mm-hmm. themselves. And it, that was easy. And so I was about a week away from doing that. And um, I'd gotten picked up from military mentor, the, he's, a, he's a retired Sergeant Major, it's his company, and, and he essentially got told about my book. He was like, I'll entertain it. He's like, but he, he was very, very blunt. He was like, look, man, like, you're not a fucking Brad Pitt. No one gives a fuck about you. Like, mm-hmm. why would anyone want to buy that? Men- memoirs and, and biographies don't do very well. And that's just the way it is. And I understood that. I wasn't taken as an insult. It's just he was being bluntly truthful about it. And I said, look, man, I'm not, I really don't care about the money. Like I was like, you can keep you. I don't really give a shit. Like, you can keep most of it. Um, I was like, I just want the, these stories to be told. And so, you know, he read it and then he, his partner read it and he was like, bro, like we kind of <laughs> like, we don't ever done a memoir before. They, they, they do a lot. The books that he does are like, if you go into like the clothing and sales on post that he's like the blue book, it says the mentor, uh, he has all the study guides yeah. and stuff. So he made all those. And so he does that kind of like leadership development type stuff. He doesn't have a memoir or anything like that under his arsenal before, really. And so he kind of like was taking the chances. He was going to front up like $10,000 essentially for um, distributing and printing and, and all that other stuff. And the and I'm very I was always very transparent with the, the contract. I wanted people to understand that um, I don't want to make money off of these events. Um, you know, if I was a businessman and I had been doing anything else, if I, I don't know, like made some new thing or whatever like okay i will take money from that and i'll go support my family but i didn't feel comfortable making you know really thousands of dollars hundreds of dollars it doesn't matter what it is i I did not feel comfortable making that money off of someone else's story like there's other people involved especially my lieutenant that's killed there's no reason that i need to be making money off of somebody else's name doesn't matter that there are my experiences that what i witnessed you know it's not i i wasn't the only one there you know what i'm Mm -hmm. saying so um, and so essentially I make a dollar a book, a dollar a sale. And of that, most of the proceeds are going to go directly to a foundation that was built for my lieutenant. It's called the, the Tyler Parton Foundation. He was a West Point graduate. Um, and so I, I send the money there, you know, every three months when I get paid or whatever from the publisher. Um, and then That's essentially, awesome. I just, I just want to help veterans out. I want the stories to be told. Like, um, you know, people were like, oh, I'll, I'll donate to the, uh, I'll donate to the, the foundation. I'm like, your best bet is to buy the book because it's going to go to the foundation anyways, because I want people to buy the book because they hear his story. They learn his name. They need to understand that Tyler gave all of his fucking tomorrows for our today's, you know what I'm saying? So the his story. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. Well, so you, your book has uh, definitely been noticed by some people. So uh, it, it's not just, Guys, it's not just this book that this Army vet put together. Sergeant Major of the Army Tilly uh, recommended it. I know some general-level officers uh, recommend it. And a Medal of Honor award winner, recipient. I don't know that we call it an award winner, but a Medal of Honor recipient also recommended your book. Uh, Why don't you talk about that for just a second? Uh, Captain Groberg? Yeah. 
blew me away. I, I didn't think that, you know, I, I sent a message to him. Um, you know, uh, I, a couple of the Medal of Honor recipients are obviously, they're all extremely busy, uh, what they do, um, because they, they are a representation of that medal and what they carry, and they are a representation of the country. And so these dudes are always extremely busy. But I, I sent him a message, and somebody, you know, it was a mutual friend, knows him and, and asked him to, you know, check this book out or whatever, and he read it, loved it. Um, just could not believe that this dude, if, if those of you don't know who, what Captain Groberg did, essentially, he was working as security detail for his boss. I think it was a colonel. I think it was. Sorry if I'm wrong. But um, he uh, essentially saw a guy that looked fishy. He was wearing bulky items. Realized he had a suicide vest on. He jumped right on this fucking dude. The vest detonated. Dude still lived. Dang. So it's fucking crazy ass. I mean, he's just a fucking a true American hero. So mm -hmm. just the fact that I can look at the back cover of my book and I see a little picture of a Medal of Honor with his name next to it. Um, that I'm even associated with just being around his name is just it's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> and and I think yeah. that speaks to the level of your book, and it speaks to, to the stories that you have there that a Medal of Honor recipient would, would recommend that. Uh, yeah. Well, listen, Sean, I know you have another interview coming up. This, this guy's a busy guy, all right? He's mm -hmm. even busier than us rea washed-up reality TV stars. <laughs> but... <laughs> but but listen, Sean, before you go, bro, this is mm -hmm. what I want you to do. Go ahead and tell me where people can follow you, how, how they can get the book. We'll also put a link in the bio. I mean, okay. that, if y'all go ahead, go on down, you'll see where you can get his book as well. And, and we'll also put your social medias up there. But why don't you tell us how any of my subscribers can follow you uh, and buy your book? Yeah, so they, um, they can follow me on Facebook, Sean Tobias Ambrose. Uh, they can follow the uh, the book's Facebook page, which is just titled Ghost of the Valley. Uh, my Instagram is chief underscore pink mist. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, I try to be serious every time I say it, but I can't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking immature. Um, <laughs> and uh, the book itself can be found on Amazon. Uh, and then you also have Nook and Kindle if you like the digital platforms. And then we are, I'm hoping you know, a couple weeks away from our audio being done, uh, our audio book. And, and the audio books can be a little different because, you know, as you've read the book so far uh, and that you saw in chapter one, you know, there's a the italicized, you know, yeah. uh, writing. And those are my internal thoughts as things are going on. And so okay. uh, the publisher paid a guy to narrate my book. He's a, you know, really good professional voice. He, he narrated the whole book. I went to a local recording studio. I recorded all those internal dialogues, sent him all that stuff. He collaborated it, so essentially you're going to hear him narrate and read the book, and as those internal thoughts come, you're going to hear my voice as if I'm talking to myself. Uh, so it's like a double narrated nice. audio book. That's awesome. So. Awesome. Well, look, y'all, make sure you buy his book. Oh, yeah, definitely. Not, and, and, and he'll be the first one to tell you it's not about him. It's about supporting his foundation. It's about supporting the help for veterans that need help. Um I mean, this is this is a great stuff. I, I wish I had read a little bit more of it before I interviewed you, but th this is good stuff. So I make sure me, you got. I'm, I'm anxious for feedback, so let me know when you when you get to that that part. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll bring you on for another interview if you're okay with it down the road. Of and I, I know you got about oh, seven yeah. weeks, and maybe well, I, I can get a yeah. red. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Hey, thank y'all. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you share the videos and all that stuff. Uh, we're almost at a thousand, uh, which isn't bad because our YouTube channel is like two and a half months old. So we're getting there. Uh, <laughs> if you if you don't like the YouTube, if you can't spend thirty minutes on YouTube, make sure to go to our podcast. All that all that information is at the bottom. Sean, thank you so much. And before you, I man. let you go, I know you're from LA, <laughs> and right now. There's a certain game that's gonna start in about 15 minutes. Can oh, I get? Oh. Can I get? Can, can I? Can I get it from you? Come on, go Braves. We need a tomahawk chop. <laughs> come, come uh, I don't think it's big American. I uh, can't do that. I, I, I gotta go with Dodgers. So. <laughs> well, good luck. All man. right, bro. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to y'all later. Appreciate oh, it. Yeah.